What's going on guys, Matty Russell here. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I built this DIY maggot harvester for less than 20 bucks. Let's get stuck into the video. Now when it comes to farming maggots, we need to ask ourselves why anyone would wanna farm maggots in the first place. The fact that you're watching this video is a good indicator that you already have your reason. But for those of you who looked at the title and the thumbnail and thought I'll check this video out, Here's why we want to breed maggots in the first place. Maggots are an awesome source of protein and a food supplement for many variety of animals. As you can see behind me here, I have a quail breeding setup and I'm gonna be using some of the maggots to supplement some of the quail food in order to add extra fat and protein into their food source. I also have an aquaponic system which has 28 jade perch in there and I'll be using those maggots in order to supplement their feed as well. Another reason someone might choose to breed or harvest or farm maggots is for their chickens. Chickens absolutely love maggots and again, another great source of protein to supplement their daily feed. Now before we go over the actual production, let's just look at some of the components that are necessary in order to make the maggot harvester or maggot farm. The primary component that you're gonna need is a 20 litre bucket, which I ended up picking up from the local hardware store. This is actually a food grade container. However, food grade's not necessarily required. On the top of the bucket here, we see what I like to call the fly intake. This is actually where the fly flies inside the bucket and lays its eggs down in the food material. The third area here is actually the maggot outlet. Now this is where the maggots go through a internal ramp inside the bucket when they want to pupate. They've eaten enough, they're as big as they're going to grow before they begin the transformation of turning into flies and they want to try and find an exit from the source of food. They make their way up the ramp and out this outlet which drops them into the jar. The jar is then simply removed by unscrewing the jar lid and the maggots are now at your disposal. Now for the construction of the fly intake, I started off with a 20 millimeter PVC T-section. I then cut off a piece of PVC pipe to slot inside the bottom of the T-section and two pieces of PVC pipe that were cut on a 45 degree angle to slide into the two sides. Now the reason these two sections here were cut at a 45 degree angle is if the maggot farm was actually in the weather, out in the elements and subject to the rain, this angle here stops any of the rain from actually getting inside and fouling up the system with unnecessary moisture. I then placed a T-section through the top of the bucket and I drilled this out with the spade bit on the drill. Once it's through the other side, we take another connector and attach it to the bottom of that PVC pipe in order to lock it into position. If you're finding this video helpful, why don't you give it a thumbs up? That helps the YouTube algorithm and consider subscribing to the channel. The next component made was the maggot outlet, which was made by using a 20 millimeter PVC elbow attached to a 20 millimeter PVC connector and placed through the jar lid again by using a spade bit on the drill to produce the hole. It was then placed through the hole and another connector added to the other side in order to fix it into position. Now because the jar actually holds quite a bit of weight, especially when it's full of maggots, I secured the 20 millimeter pipe to the elbow with a screw. I then secured the maggot outlet to the bucket through a hole which I drilled with a spade bit and secured it to the inside with a 45 degree angle elbow. I then used a piece of 19 millimeter irrigation pipe and attached it to the elbow to act as a ramp for the maggots to exit. Now what happens here guys is the flies actually go down into the bucket and lay their eggs on the rotten meat. The eggs then hatch and produce the maggots. The maggots eat their fill until they are fully grown and ready to pupate. Once that process takes place, they then want to get out of the food source and exit the bucket, which they do through the 19 millimeter irrigation pipe through the elbow and down into the collection jar. Essentially what's really happening is they're going out of the fry pan into the flame. I then use them here in the backyard farm to feed the quail and the fish in the aquaponic system. A great bit of tucker. Now guys, when it comes to adding food sources into the maggot farm, the general rule of thumb is that you wanna use animal products as opposed to vegetable scraps. Maggots are actually carnivores and shy away from their veggies. They wanna to go to a meat source or an animal product that is decomposing in order to consume. Then you wanna use things like off milk, off eggs, 
stale cheese. I actually chose to use the carcasses from quail which I had harvested for meat production. I've also added in there a mouse that I caught out of the mouse trap. You could add in their meat scraps from the kitchen and some people would even go as far as using roadkill and dead animal carcasses. The benefit of using the quail carcasses here in my backyard is because there's actually no waste product that's coming out of my quail production. I eat the eggs, incubate the eggs, grow out the quail for meat production, put their carcasses into the maggot farm, harvest the maggots, feed them back to the quail, or to the fish in the aquaponics system. And for the record, the fish in the aquaponics system are actually for my family's consumption also. Waste not, want not. So when it comes to sustainability and permaculture, a maggot farm is a great addition that you should have on either your homestead, your farm, or in your backyard. In the same way that I use a vermicompost or a worm farm in order to recycle my food scraps, in terms of vegetable waste, I have a maggot farm to recycle the meat scraps as well. And there you have it guys, that's how I made a DIY maggot farm for less than 20 bucks. Thanks for watching today's video and we'll catch you in the next one.